graduate of Penview Bible Institute, as he comes and he speaks to us about zooming in. Pleasant good afternoon. Can everybody hear me? Uh, I just have, I just have to get this off my chest. Uh, John Mark, this is a lot scarier than Sunday school. Oh man. Okay, well, what a privilege it is. A pleasant good afternoon, first of all, and what a privilege it is to be uh, at youth convention another year. What an honor to have the opportunity to speak to you eternal souls for a few moments. Assuredly, it is a privilege that I do not take lightly. Zoom in, get the picture, your potential, God's plan. With that, I was asked by my good friend, Brother Matt Malloyd, if I would share my testimony. Upon being asked that question, fear, hesitation, and trepidation swept over my entire being. For this task required me reaching into places that I've tried to keep locked away from myself. It required me to relive and refresh my mind with what I would consider nightmares of the past. It would require me to open the gates of my past mistakes and willful wrongdoing to not only just one individual, but obviously to the vast majority. Memories that not only have wounded, but scarred the soul. However, I found comfort as I read Revelations 12, verses 10 and 11. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom for God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of her brethren is cast down, which accused them before God day and night. Amen. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb yes. Yes. and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. Friends, before I even go on, I want to stop and say praise the Lord that we can be overcomers through the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank the Lord that assuredly earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal. It doesn't matter where you've been or what you've done. God's grace and God's love can still reach to where you are today. Today I stand before you as one redeemed, as one who has washed his robe and the spotless blood of Christ. My story begins in Belize, Central America, on August 28, 1995, my parents, Donald and Stephanie Gillett, were ready and anticipating to meet their newborn baby boy, or should I say my mother was. I was first welcomed into the world and greeted by being placed as another statistic in a single parent family. My dad had cheated on my mom before I was even born and ended the pregnancy, and not the pregnancy obviously, but ended the marriage. I was told that the only reason my dad even went to the hospital was to register me without my mom's knowledge so he could get the finances for doing so. Fast forward a couple years, I was now about five years of age. My dad was happily remarried and had other kids while I watched my mother struggle to take care of her young child and her mother on her lonesome. As my childhood memory permits, I remember growing up under the thumb and influence of my grandmother. My mother was always away working, endeavoring to meet her financial needs. She had long hours, hard shifts. She served as a main cook at a village hotel, and my father was a police officer. She didn't come home very often, but whenever she did, she was always overjoyed to see us, to see me. I loved my mother dearly, and her love for us had no bounds. Time at home with mom weren't always a joyous occasion. I saw her come home from work exhausted, and I watched her cry her eyes out when the money was not enough to meet the bills. I tried to offer what comfort I could as a little child, but I knew that my comfort could not get the bills paid. 
I knew in my little heart that had my father not left us, we would not have to struggle as much as we did. The relationship with my dad and I was never a good one. He lived in the same village, but never did anything for us. Despite the ill treatment of my dad, my mother never encouraged me to hate my dad. Hatred for my dad was developed on my own accord. I do not know if it was because he threatened to kill my mother when she needed financial help with her son or his son, or if it was the many Father's Day celebrations at church that I was what seemed to be the only neglected and fatherless child. High school came around and that meant that I was off to the big city. It was a dog-eat-dog world out there and certainly not a world for village boys. I recall as a freshman in high school, a friend and I went out to buy lunch and were robbed in the first week of school returning from lunch. What an introduction. The robbers only got $7 from me, but my friend, however, was robbed of his whole month's allowance. I was furious. My mother and grandmother knew nothing about my life apart from home, but I had gotten acquainted with bad company. My speech was polluted with obscenity, and some of my friends were gang members. These same friends were going to later on introduce me to drugs and alcohol but they had my back this one time. Directly after getting robbed, I placed a call to my friends and immediately they were searching the streets of Belize City for the guys that mugged us. They found the guys in about an hour and at my request, they were beaten severely. The older I got, the more I rebelled and the farther I drifted. My grandmother was the only Christian in our household and she would force me to go to church, much to my displeasure. There were many times my grandma and I would get into heated arguments that would leave her in tears. I can still hear the words resounding in my ear. Are you trying to kill me? Are you not grateful? Look at all I've done for you, and this is the way you treat me. You might not care, but I love you, and I'm praying for you. Words, ladies and gentlemen, words so deep and so real it should have melted my calloused heart, but it didn't. In my perspective at that time, my grandmother and mother were just a hindrance. They wanted to control my life, so I threatened to live with my father several times. My dad was a sorry excuse for a parent. He was the kind of guy that allowed his youngest son to be watching pornography. But to me, my dad at that time meant freedom. High school for me was anything but school. The only thing I cared about was girls, money, and friends. We were at the top of the food chain. My clique had it all. We had uh, guns, we had girls, we had dope, and we had money. We were the guys that got high on lunch break and caused havoc in the class period after. I should have been suspended several times or even expelled, but we also had a way to rig the system so we didn't get in trouble. Whenever we would fall short, we had guys that were willing to take the hit for us. In the world's eyes and in the eyes of my friends, we were sailing on cloud nine. That is until one of my friends was killed in a hit and run accident. He was a good friend of mine and this tragedy shook my world. That incident was the start of my life spiraling out of control. There are many things encouraged in the world today, but purity and morality isn't any of those things. And there is no difference in Belize. They always made it seem that purity in young men made you less of a man. Which and I'm here to tell you it doesn't, by the way. I was in bad relationships and certainly a relationship that wasn't acceptable in the sight of God. I drank alcohol and smoked marijuana, not because I was addicted, but mainly because of peer pressure. This was a practice that, that, uh, this was a practice that I did constantly until I rolled one joint that was probably laced with something and I could recall the pure fear 
that swept over my body and my being when my heart started beating profusely. My vision was blurred. My mental stability crumbled as I thought I was about to die. I was up against the wall and and another situation occurred that I will not mention, but that pushed me over the edge. I felt my life had no worth and I had nothing to live for. At age 17, my baggage was so great, I contemplated suicide. But however, my contemplations of suicide never led into any attempts because I was not stupid. I'm not saying anybody in here that actually had contemplations of suicide is stupid, but I knew, even though I wasn't a Christian, I knew that if I would go ahead and kill myself, then the real hell would start. So any of you in here that have contemplations of suicide or have tried it in the past, don't do it again. It will not solve your problem. You should be smarter than that. In August of 2013, this host church, Beavertown God's Missionary Church, came over on a missions trip. And two key men in my life, Dwight Ryan and Matthew Malloy, Men I owe my life to. Men I owe an eternity of thanks. They lit a flame in my heart through their ministry. And they expressed to me that you can never be too broken. You can never go too far. They expressed to me the depth and the love of of God. They asked me about attending Bible college, and with God's help in a month or less, we accomplished the impossible. I got a passport, a visa, and a visa in in a time period that was impossible to do. Penview Bible Institute, a landmark in my life. I was in choir at the Haven of Rest Bible Church in Galax, Virginia, in the middle of the song, Into All the World, when God called what seemed to be the chief of sinners to preach his glorious gospel. Bible college was difficult. It wasn't a transition from sinner to saint overnight. I fell countless times, but with the help of God and the guidance of godly people, I got back up and intended to press towards the high calling through Jesus Christ. While at Bible college, many of my old friends died and it broke my heart. It broke my heart because many of them died without ever knowing God. And I was humbled that God saw it fit to save me. While I was working on my testimony, God led me to scroll through Facebook. By the way, uh, guys that preach, girls that preach, Facebook is not a good source. (laughs) Facebook is not a good source. I didn't go to Facebook for sources. Uh, But God led me to go, and he led me through my news, through my, uh, my past feed for years and years. And I started looking back through the pictures. And I... I saw where I came from, and I saw where I am today, and I said, thank the Lord. And he led me to to write a poem, and the poem goes, I was flipping through some pictures and albums today, the smiles, the faces, the colors, one big collage array. With each picture a memory, a lifetime displayed, I could hear the laughter, the sounds, all an instant replay. The faces of of family and friends, of which some lost their way, Their life, like the sands, filled with heartache, turmoil, decay. I flipped through some pictures and albums today, the chapters of life, all on full display. The pictures of friends, but their colors in gray, all smothered and smeared. What a horrific display. Who painted these pictures as I ripped them away? No laughter, no life, only dread and dismay. I pray to the Lord, take these pictures away. I look to the heavens, tears stained away as I talk to the Lord of the pictures in gray. Lord, my friends, my family, they've all lost their way. Art thou not faithful? Hast thou not shown them the way? 
And he replied, the pitchers and gray are thy friends passed away, all whom had none to show them my light and my way. But ladies and gentlemen, my favorite verse in the Bible, but God commanded his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. When I realized that God had already died for me, even though he knew I was a sinner, that did not stop him. He knew what I would do, but yet he saw it fit to die for me, even though he knew my actions. He, he did the same for you. I'm here to tell you that as long as you have breath in your body, you can repent of your sins and you can be reconciled unto God. As I glance across this congregation today and see the many faces, I think to myself, oh God, the potential, almost limitless. Ladies and gentlemen, can you even begin to imagine what a crowd like this, if their hearts are sold out for God, can do for him? If you've messed up in the past, my advice to you is get it under the blood and forget about it. Ladies and gentlemen, you can never expect to gain ground in your Christianity on your walk with God if you keep on holding to the past. If you know assuredly that your sins are forgiven, there is no need to dwell under the dark cloud of condemnation. John 8.36 says, So, <clears throat> if the Son, therefore, shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. My advice to you today is, give God your potential so he can use you for his plan. Thank you. They are covered by the blood. They are covered by the blood. My sins are all covered by the blood. My iniquities so vast have been blotted out at last. My sins are all covered by the blood. Can you testify? I can ne'er understand why he saw even me, why his life. We heard about somebody who went from the depths of depravity. God takes him, saves him, and calls him into the ministry. And that can happen today, young people. It's still happening. God's still saving. He's still calling young people into his white and harvest field. We're going to hear from